The reality is that Christianity makes claims about the nature of existence. It makes claims about the nature of reality, and it makes claims about the way it is best to be human. And more inherently, classical liberalism fundamentally is flawed because it is against the idea of collectivism. It is based upon the idea of the individual, and you cannot muster any kind of resistance against the collective if you all want to stand apart. They want to use the church and the Christian faith for their own political agenda. We as Christians must oppose that. We must not allow our faith to be prostituted by liberals in their fight against Islam. Some Sharia schools that say abortion before 40 days is wrong. And there are some schools that say abortion at before 40 days is okay. These are two contradictory positions. They can't both be right. These are people that are, uh, that's their understanding. But thought this was from God. Show me in here where it says God is benevolent. Doesn't someone? Doesn't somebody say uh, our God is a loving God at some point? Or, um, and, and what do you understand by the word benevolent? Um, it, it, well, I, I can I can sort of give an example of something that's definitely not benevolent. So it would definitely not be benevolent to punish people for a crime they never committed because, like, logically, someone if they didn't commit that crime, they can't be guilty of it. Like, you know, it, it's just like not fair. Really, um, and then so like when uh, I think it's in Two Kings, um, there's a, a person where who um, uh, does something wrong, and then God kind of gives him leprosy and his entire you know line and future children leprosy, where you know the future children can't be responsible for that thing, so they but can't the, be punished for it. I I I, I, I disagree with the idea that families are not units and that they do not bear one another's burdens or, or sins. Okay, but I disagree with that fundamentally. Okay, so you, you, you'd agree that uh, you know um, an unborn child doesn't exist yet and so can't have taken part in the act, the offence of action. What I'm saying is that the, the sins that your parents commit, you do inherit them. But, that, but you didn't do the yeah, you didn't do the sin though. So so hold on one second. Let, let me give you a real example. Would you agree with me that the British Empire, when it was around the world, plundered, plundered our ancestors, plundered the riches of the world? Yes. And the wealth of the nation that we now live in is as a direct result of that plundering. Yeah. Are we inheritors of those people's crimes? We, we aren't inherent, we, we don't bear moral responsibility for the crime. But, but we, we benefit should. from it, right? We, we, we currently benefit from right. it. Now, now let's reverse that and look at it the other way. Let us imagine that our forefathers, rather than plundering the rest of the world, gave everything that Britain had away. Do you agree on this thought experiment that we would be all poorer because of that action? We would be. Right. So the fact of the matter is, when the Bible is this example that you're giving, what it's talking about, and yes, it's describing it to God, it's talking about this passing on of a person's sin from generation to generation. It's teaching us that what one generation does, another generation inherits. Okay, but and that's just a principle of life, but whether you think it's just or not. No, no, but the, the, the example you gave of the British Empire, like the reason why there's an ongoing uh, cause for concern there is because there is 
still kind of uh, ongoing injustice, like the action passes on the injustice, yeah. and so if, if it was like, um, if like, for example, uh, reason to feel hard, hard done by towards me because I, I hadn't committed that action and it hasn't uh, like but this, the, your this, what, what, what you're doing is you're interpreting morality through Western individualism. Western individualism is not the, the culture that the scriptures are speaking into. And it's not something that I believe in. Okay. I do not believe in Western individualism. I don't believe you're stood here as an individual. I believe that you're part of the family. Okay. Okay. I, I, I don't agree with that, I just think it's I, I know you know. The, 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 the philosophy of the West is that we're all individuals. So there's no such thing as collective responsibility, unless you're in cabinet. But, but the point is that, that that worldview is something I fundamentally disagree with. I think that human beings exist in relationships and exist because of relationships, and therefore their actions are shared. Okay. And the consequences of their actions are shared. Because I, I've heard you kind of defend uh, the current uh, Western secular legal system before, and that si legal system takes as a very kind of uh, core principle that um, you know, uh, sort of like uh, you wouldn't punish a child for his father's crimes. So, you know, it's uh, surprising me to hear this now that like kind of you, I, you so I, fundamentally disagree with it. I, I disagree with the idea of Western individualism. That doesn't mean that in comparison to Sharia law, I cannot see that Western legal systems are superior. Okay, yeah. And yeah, so when sense. I'm defending Western legal systems, it is because they are superior to Sharia law. Okay. It doesn't mean that I agree with the basis of Western Enlightenment civilization. The idea of this, this individual that is a god only to himself and a god to himself is something I fundamentally disagree with. Okay. Do you, now, do you think the church has been improved by the Enlightenment at all? In in parts and in places. Okay. But okay. not 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 at core. Okay. So, but there is definitely. But I would say the Enlightenment is a virgin of 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 lots of Christian narratives. Yeah. And and my point to you is is that you 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 identify as a cultural Christian, and I welcome that. But what I'm saying is, take your heritage seriously. Take it seriously. Learn what it is that the Christian faith actually teaches. Because what it actually teaches is something radically different from what you have been brought up to know. Yeah. Okay. You, you, what I'm saying to you, bro, is you have been disconnected from your own history. You have been separated from your own identity. You've been separated from the history of your own people. I think you're, you're making a few assumptions there. Like uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't like disassociate myself from like, my history as an English person. Um, so tell me, if you if you're identifying as a cultural Christian and you're saying that you well, know, I mean, Christian, yeah, I, I, I what does it mean to be a Christian? I, I identify as being a follower of Christ. Identify as being a yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what it means to me. If someone says I'm Christian, that means to me that they're a follower of Christ. Yeah, it means to be a disciple of Christ. And what was Christ's teaching? The gospel, which is uh, you know what what these people what's been recorded as his teachings by the disciples. Yeah. Now that's and a very uh, that's a very writers. general way of saying you don't actually know what the gospel is. What is but, the gospel? I mean. If you wanted me to say exactly every single one of Christ's teachings, wouldn't that no, 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 take no. a long time? The gospel could be summarized. Every Christian can summarize it very quickly. What's the gospel? I don't know. Right. What, what's, what's the summary of no, Christ's my teachings? Point, my, point is, my point is, my point is, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying to point something out to you. The gospel has been the most influential narrative of European civilization. It has moulded everything around us. It is our heritage if we're identifying purely a cultural level. It is who we are if we are Christian. So when someone says to me, I am a cultural Christian, my first thought is how much do they actually know about their own heritage? If they're claiming my faith as their heritage, 
How much do they actually know? Yeah, I, I never, I never claim to be an expert. Right, and, and, and I'm not saying that, yeah. but this is my point: <laughs> is for people that are claiming to defend the heritage of this land, but yet don't know what the gospel is, it means that they don't know what their own heritage. Is. Well, what's the one-line summary of the gospel then? What's the one-line summary well, yeah, of the gospel the is that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that those that believe on Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Okay. Every Christian can summarize the gospel, and every cultural Christian, like yourself, should be able to. And you should understand why these words have influenced your language, your cultural yeah. norms, your legal I, system. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that yeah, has influenced all those things. But why has that gospel influenced those things? Because if you can't answer that question, you can't defend anything. Well, I mean, yeah, that that would kind of provide the, the, this idea that um, you know. If, if some crime has been committed, then like somebody has to pay, basically. Like, if, if you're saying that kind of because because mankind has sinned and, ang and God is angry with them, you know, someone has to pay for that in order for God not to be angry anymore. And so Jesus decided to do that or something like that. I mean, that that's the that seems to me to be, and that message has like kind of, you know affected our culture. It has. Yeah. And 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 it, it is in in in. in Infused itself into our culture profoundly, but every step away from that belief is a step away from that heritage and that understanding. And, and Western I, liberal society is walking itself off a cliff. I I don't think that. I mean, yeah, I, I don't see. I mean, what 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 period in time do you think had the best version of Christianity? Um, it, it isn't about best or worst. It is about. I would say. I would say I disagree with the, the idea of the question. This idea that we can point to some time in history and say that some point in history was better. What I would say is that the Christian faith teaches fundamentally that human beings are sinful and broken and that human beings have always been sinful and broken and will break everything that they touch in terms of social construct. That includes Christendom, includes the church, and that, and that man has no answer to this. He has no answer to that brokenness in his human heart that speaks vile and, and vindictive towards his fellow man, that seeks only after his own good, that he's self-interested, self-ego-bloating, self-serving. I, I don't think it's that piece out there. I say it like kind of, you know, humans have a bunch of uh, incentives that they're trying to maximize, and you can kind of cr you can try and uh, affect the environment such that they won't indulge in a kind of um, behaviors that are kind of seen as destructive, and you can try and uh, mold their culture so that they have like uh, norms of behavior that are uh, less destructive or violent, and so that you can accomplish good work doing that. You, you, seem, quite to successful. Me, you, you seem to me to be self-aware enough to acknowledge, which I, uh, which I believe to be true, that inside your own heart, there are times when hate fills it. Yeah. There are times in your own heart when you lie. Yeah. There are times in your own heart when you steal. But that, that doesn't mean that we can't do anything about it, though. So my point to you is, you, 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 but you can't do anything about that. No, but we can, we can minimise its effects, though. And that is a Christian political narrative, for sure. Okay. Because the whole point of the Christian political exercise, people who identify as cultural Christians, want the moniker cultural Christian. They want that, that but, tick that they can give themselves. Uh, I, I, mean, second, I mean, maybe I'm using it in a slightly different where, what do you context. Mean? From how you understand it, what, like, what do you mean, sorry? I, I mean that I have, uh, I, I, I have sympathy. I, I mean that um, I, uh, I consider it more desirable for um, kind of the background of uh, kind of Britain's um, culture to have this uh, Christian heritage than I would uh, any other kind of religion. So what, so what you're saying is you want Christianity to work as a bulk walk against Islamization, but you don't want real Christianity. Um, that, 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 that captures some of it, definitely. I mean, yeah. I, def I definitely don't want, I definitely don't want, um, for example, uh, um, I definitely don't want to kind of 
call myself a cultural Christian. That's not, that's not a label that I kind of consider close to my heart. And I really want to possess okay. that label. So if you don't, and, right, and the so other and the other thing is that like yeah. not more more so, than more so than just being me, worried about just more than point. more than just being worried about Islamization. I do have some appreciations for the aesthetic uh, parts let, of the let, Christian let, church, let which I consider which I, I consider like desirable. And, and this is important: is that what we see amongst in, among certain liberals is that they want to use the church and the Christian faith for their own political agenda. We as Christians must oppose that. We must not allow our faith to be prostituted by liberals in their fight against Islamists. But, but when you say prostitute, no, that would imply finish. that I'm debasing let, you in let, some let way. Or ask, let I'm, let not, it's not saying that I'm, I'm not asking you to debase yourself let in me any finish. way. As Christians, as Christians, those those who want to use our faith for their own ends forget that we as Christians are a community, the church is a community that has its own agenda and its own politics. And that means that we must oppose those people who only want to use our faith as a shield when it suits them and then want to say, but we don't want the good stuff that Christianity has to offer when it doesn't suit them. Because the reality is that Christianity makes claims about the nature of existence. It makes claims about the nature of reality and it makes claims about the way it is best to be human. And those claims are not compatible with an agnostic liberalism. True. Yeah. They make competing claims. That, that doesn't mean we, can, we can't coexist in some way. I'm not, I'm not asking you to debase yourself or uh, you know, um, sell your body, so I'm not sure how far that uh, kind of piece of language actually reflects what, what, what has just happened here. Yeah, so, so the, the, the point that I'm making to you is that I would resist any attempt by any organized liberal, classic, classical liberal movement to manipulate the church to serve its own political agenda. I would resist that. Okay. Same as I would but, resist the Salafists and the yeah. Islamists. What, what if someone says that, like, you know, uh, our interests overlap in this area, kind of, um, you know, uh, let's let's not um, kind of uh, get in each other's way, like, let, let's just maintain the status quo that, that we currently have and, um, you know, uh, cooperate where it makes sense for both of us to cooperate. So where is, that, it, is that prostituting? So, so where, because where, where, I described you as a man of goodwill, based upon your stance on abortion. And I stand by that. Okay. That means you are a man of goodwill because your will is to the good okay. on that question. But the Christian faith leaves no space for other ontologies. It leaves no space for competing ideas. The Christian faith says that there's one Lord and that we should give ourselves wholly to him. Which means that when someone comes with a competing narrative about how the world is or how best to be human, we have to challenge them if they disagree with our faith. Okay, but so like, you not, might not persecute say, though necessarily, right? It, so, that, it depend on the circumstances, but uh, it, oh, it that would it depend. <laughs> that makes it harder for me, man. If you so, say, if you so say then, well, uh, maybe me, we let, could let persecute me, you. Let me give you an example. Let me. I do not believe we should have any tolerance at all for ISIS or ISIS supporters. Okay. Zero tolerance for ISIS or ISIS supporters. Zero. Okay. Yeah. So what am I saying? I'm saying the state should hound them into the sewers and then hound them into the sea. However, you're not an ISIS supporter. Yeah. So different people have to be treated differently. I, I would actually disagree with that on ISIS supporters though. Right, well... I, I prefer like America's freedom of speech where, you know, someone could like hold a, you know, KKK kind of speech, someone could hold an ISIS speech. Someone could hold a black panther speech. But let's face it, ISIS hold... supporters are not just going to give speeches, are they? <laughs> no, no, they won't. But, but then, let's but be then, honest, but no, but then, ISIS supporters but, are no, not just going to give speeches. No, but, speeches. No, no, but the, then the FBI steps in once they start kind of getting ready to do a, a terrorist attack. And, you know, they see, have you actually started planning for this terrorist attack? Okay, you're going to jail. And this is the political narrative of the West based upon the idea of the individual. And it is exactly why they do not have a solution to radicalization that is happening within the Islamic community. Because... I think America has a solution. I think America is doing well. What is, what is America's solution? Well, like, if you look at the state of uh, Salafism and uh, uh, Wahhabism in America, it's much less of a problem in America it's than a in the UK. Problem. Um, 
and I, I think if you look, no, like oh, the, the, the the general front, the, the trends of like the Muslim population in America is that they're becoming kind of more and more homogenized and liberal. Like the the uh, the acceptance of homosexuality amongst uh, Muslims in America is uh, higher than kind of uh, Christians in America. So they they they're being you know they're. They're, 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 they're would, would you say that there is an, uh, there, oh, over, uh, if we trace it back 10, 20 years, would you say there has been a growing or a decreasing threat by ISIS there's, to American to, soil? I, I think there's been a growing, even, I think there's been a growing threat by ISIS, but by other metrics, kind of things are also going well. It's like, um, it's like if, if you, if you, if the, if the pie is getting bigger and you're getting a smaller slice, uh, a, a smaller. If, if the percentage of the pie you're getting is smaller, but the pie is getting bigger, you might end up with more pie. But like overall, uh, y you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I do get yeah. what you're saying. I do get what you're saying. But in, I mean, and in, in, in terms of how we slice the cake, when we look across the, uh, the Islamic world, the radical Muslims are winning the debate with their fellow Muslims, which I, is I, clearly stated. I, 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 I want to state for the record. I don't think that's true. I want to state for the record then I'm not here saying that every Muslim is a radical Muslim. Many Muslims are against the radical Muslims. But the percent went from the birth of Al-Qaeda, which is kind of like, we'll just call that the start point, though it clearly wasn't. From the birth of Al-Qaeda, the number of radicals has grown dis uh, has grown massively. Yeah. You cannot deny a fact. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's true. And the, 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 the liberal way of trying to tackle this is on the premise of, well, it's just individuals carrying out criminal actions. And that is not dealing with the problem. Yeah. Because the Western liberal mindset doesn't accept the idea of collective cultures. Well, uh, well, well liberal one, progressives do. Yeah. One, one, uh, one, one, one kind of good example of like Western liberalism kind of taking proactive steps to defend itself is how it's attacked. It proactively attacked communism, which was an ideological threat, and it's kind of like made sure that it, it kind of incentivized its academics to attack this. It uh, tried to subvert uh, communist organizations. So e even though it's even though kind of like you, you're still giving people the right to make communist speeches, you're still like you know taking proactive uh, policy decisions to make it hard for them. Can you act can you explain to me, in, uh, from your perspective, why you think classical liberalism is losing sway to liberal progressives? It's um, well, it, it's because people in the media kind of uh, are more often of an empathetic mindset, and people of an empathetic mindset can be easily persuaded to these kind of uh, but what postmodern is, Marxist narratives. What is it about? What is it about classical liberalism? that is unable to counter the liberal progressive narrative because you are, you're a mi in this place you're more of a minority than I am yeah probably. and actually I would say in society classical liberals are a smaller in number than Christians yeah yeah, yeah probably so what is it inherently about liberal classic because I like lab, uh, classical liberalism over yeah. lots of other opinions and ideologies and belief systems. Yeah. But what is it that is inherent about classical liberalism that it has become such a profound failure in our society? It, it's, it's, I don't think it is a failure because... Ha, 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 it, where, where, where's the great classical it, it, liberalists of our well, age? They're, they're, they're often in like economics and law departments and um, like, of, like, they, like in, in the media kind of, uh, you know, post-Marxist -mar like Mar -Marx and postmodern doctrines are popular and that's because like you know if you want to work in the media you're probably going to be of an empathetic personality type and you know in the humanities department it kind of spreads it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a cancer like it, it's it's you know it gets killed by a kind of rigorous logical thinking but it, it's, it's just not exposed to that um, why isn't it exposed to that I mean why has it, li classical liberalism failed our it, society you would agree and, and it is, is being pushed down a Marxist yeah. rat hole yeah. that will ultimately collapse in on itself. We both see the problem, even if we're coming from different angles. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Now, I am certain the church will be here long after that implosion has happened. We are going to survive, yeah. whatever, because yeah. we've gone through 2,000 years of history. Why has classical liberalism failed in the West? Why does it have the minds of the people anymore? But, but well, the thing is, like the, the the sort of the reasonable people in the middle, by default, they they ex 
accept, they'd be more likely to accept classical, the classical liberal kind of uh, view of things, the view, the classical liberal view of fairness. I think like that is the default. It's just like there, there are more kind of proactive agitators amongst uh, leftists and Marxists and postmodernists. There are greater numbers of them. Can I suggest another reason? Yeah, sure. The reason why classical liberalism fails is because it is a rational philosophy that does not speak to the fullness of humanity. It doesn't speak to a man's emotions. It doesn't speak to a man's sense of history, his sense of place, his sense of identity. So unless you are of a particular bent, that you are particularly rational. What do I look like? Most people don't engage with classical liberal concepts. And more inherently, classical liberalism fundamentally is flawed because it is against the idea of collectivism. It is based upon the idea of the individual and you cannot muster any kind of resistance against the collective if you all want to stand apart. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that's, that, that's true. Like, so, I, I think you can still modify, I think you can still modify you, kind of well, liberalism second. into a more robust form. Though. If you agree with my analysis as to the failure of classical liberalism, Will you take a word from the wise? And by wise, I mean the church, not myself. So that that identity cannot be shook or moved or molded by the waves of circumstance and chance. Some, you have to have an authority that is higher than me or higher than the collective we, so that when the we says, we're all going this way, because you're looking to an authority that is above the we and also above the I, you aren't giving in to your own personal desires, or however corrupt or good they may be, and you are not led by the crowd, so that you can say, no, we should go that way. And when you do decide to go that way, you can create your own wake because you form together as a group and drag people along with you. In other words, the Christian way of life would give you the strength that you're looking for to resist the cultural Marxists. Liberal classical, classical liberalism, as much as I have a lot of agreement with it, has already failed and yeah, I will continue to fail. Yeah. I, I think that you might be correct that um, you know the, the only kind of solution might be what you say. I, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not certain about that. I think there's a good chance that uh, cultural Marxism will collapse just like uh, communism collapsed, and that uh, oh definitely and, 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 and that kind of liberalism will be able to defend itself just because it's you know it makes sense and it works very well and so I I'm, I'm, I think you may be right but uh, I'm, I'm not certain and I hope you aren't correct I hope like uh, liberalism kind of is robust enough to uh, kind of defend itself from this particular kind of cancer that it's faced with at the moment um, but, but, uh, but yeah. on what basis my but, point no, is on the basis of arguments and like uh, just pointing out look that that's really that's that's that that particular kind of uh, idea is unfair fair or you stupid don't, or kind my of point uh, is, flies my in the point face is, of liberal, reality. Uh, because liberal classical liberalists are so rational, they interpret everything through rational argument. The reality is, the reason why the, the, the Christian world was so ready to embrace the rational arguments of the classical liberalists is because a Christian culture conditioned the society to do so. We don't live in that Christian milieu. And so, what we have been moved by the cultural Marxist is towards a collective emotionalism, a collective identity. Okay, well, that, that, that sounds like a little bit strange what you've just said because that would, that would be almost like saying that uh, the Christian culture uh, sort, of, um, uh, sort of conditioned itself to accept Voltaire who, you know, would be against the Christian culture. Forget Voltaire, he's not the example of the Enlightenment. He's part of the Enlightenment. He, he, he is a part of the Enlightenment, but okay, the, the Enlightenment meant, started with René Descartes. Okay, yeah, and what yeah, was yeah. René Descartes' great conclusion? Uh, I think that's where I am. Cogito ergo sum. So he's making a, an existential argument based on individualism. Yeah. Not because he himself thought in individualistic terms, sure. but because his Jesuit teachers had taught him to make rational arguments. So it was the church that conditioned our society to think rationally. It doesn't mean that every conclusion that you come to is a rational one. 
Yeah, I mean, but, you know, on the other hand, like, uh, in the Middle Ages, there was a more of a fatalist outlook about, uh, you know, disease and things like that, like, uh, you know, that yep. th this plague was sent by God, that sort of thing. And so, you know, at a different state, I, I mean, like, how, how do you, how do you, what, what, what caused that uh, progression where the church was previously kind of quite fatalist about things like disease to kind of, uh, I know, the 17th century and 18th century where, like, uh, the church was more open to uh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, and this is the point. This is why you need to discover your heritage as a cultural Christian. Is because if you did know your heritage as a cultural Christian, you wouldn't have created a false dichotomy. The idea that at some point in the past the church was against science and ignorant of the natural world, and then suddenly in the 1700s woke up yeah, to the idea. I, I, I mean, I, I, I was, I was, I was, I was oversimplifying it, but, yeah, exactly. but that, that, cha that changed exactly. That, no, no, but that no, progression, on, that progression no, must have happened. Second. Hold on one second. No, no, no. If you're, if you're this second. stage, no, no, then no, you're this stage. No, must have no, no. The fact of the matter is, the church was always sponsoring science. Always. Okay, not not kind of cutting up cadavers though. No, it was all. But but the, you, you you're working from some false reading of history that at some point the church woke up to the importance of science. Mm. No, no, no. Francis no, no. Bacon, I, 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 yeah, I don't Francis Bacon science. was a 13th century philosopher who did many scientific experiments. He was a priest. Yeah. Occam's razor. Yeah, one of sure. the fundamental principles. That was come up by a monk. Yeah, the yeah. fact of the matter is that there has never been a time in church history when the church has been against science in toto. Yeah, I, I don't believe that the church has been against so, science in toto. So, when you say, when you try to create this false dichotomy of the ignorance of the medieval period versus the enlightened period of the 1700s, what I'm suggesting to you is that people were as knowledgeable as the the available knowledge permitted them to be in every age. Okay. And that means that there was never a time when the church was against increasing in knowledge. The very fact that science took root in Western Europe is not an accident. It is a direct consequence of the belief, the Christian belief, that God was a rational being and that through reason we could think God's thoughts after him. The natural philosophers saw their exercise in inquiring into the natural world as a mystical way to draw closer to God. That is what inspired them to do so. Galileo Galilei was one example, a Christian, opposed by the institution of the church because of a personal rivalry he had with the Pope. Okay, but like we, we can admit that the what would you call it, the institutional church, you know, at some point uh, kind of uh, kind of did more. Even even though I, I admit that as if you if you ask the church at any point, do you want to further mankind's knowledge of the natural world? They'd say, yeah, of course, that's great. But even even though they'd say that you, they'd answer yes in that respect, kind of, if, if they're still like against, for example, um, you know, uh, cutting open dead bodies to find out how they work, that still kind of represents a a, 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 a slight obstacle to science scientists discovering how medicine works. And so like that that was that was the case kind of. Uh, you know, earlier in the Middle Ages, and then at some point the, the church kind of ceased, kind of, uh, you know, um, putting that pressure on. So I, you know, I, it, it just occurred to me to like, and I wonder why that happened because because of something you mentioned earlier. It seemed like uh, uh, you said that you know, it, it's the church alone that kind of makes us so ready to accept uh, rationalism. And I thought, oh well, you know, given that the church kind of uh, hindered scientific progress or one particular part of scientific progress. I, I get this, the, this false narrative, the idea that the church hindered scientific progress. No, but, no, but I mean, well, like medicine. Let's just get, get, let's, let's, be clear. let's be clear. Let's be clear. You could not build the medieval cathedrals that we are inheritors of, like yeah. York Abbey and Canterbury Cathedral and St. Paul's and Westminster Abbey without the application of science. Quite, quite right. Yeah, yeah, true. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. So the fact of the matter is, is that our constant striving towards God is what allowed the church to embrace more and more scientific knowledge. And it eventually reached a point that it became justified within the church's mind to allow experimentation on human bodies to discover cures. 
The reason being, probably, is because someone previously had managed to identify germs and bacteria that had lived in the human body. And when that particular scientific knowledge had been achieved, it meant that it became justifiable to experiment on human beings. So the point is, every scientific development depends upon the one that came before it. And people base their, their moral understanding on certain intrinsic values as, as they are measured within knowledge. So I have a principle of love and the sanctity of the human body. Yeah? Which means that I would disagree with doing experiments on human beings just for the sake of it. Unless that good could be of such a nature that it would benefit multiple people. It's a double blind trial. Sorry? Double blind trial. Double blind, you'll have to forgive me, I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 medical, a medical scientist, so if you're talking about... Double blind. Right. Okay. If, if they are working within in an ethical the context... Environment. What's sorry? If it's in an ethical environment. Yes. Where the people know that they can either be... I wouldn't be opposed to that. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Because the, the thing about the Christian faith, in terms of our praxis, we, ha we, when we don't have a system of laws to follow. We have a, 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 an ethic, a principle, which is about love. Yeah. Now what love means changes depending on the circumstances and the context. And that circumstances and context is obviously decided by possibilities which are uh, um, instrumented through technology. So the more possibilities and instruments there are, the more possibilities you have, which means that how love is displayed, characterized, and, and lived out changes. But that doesn't mean, but that also means that some things become possible that I can't have, I can't have agreement with, such as abortion. It's possible. And I can see that in some circumstances, it might even be to the benefit of the woman. But I can't agree with it at all, because it's intrinsically wrong. Contraception is intrinsically wrong, even though I can see that it might produce some benefit. Contraception. Contraception. Even before the zygote is formed. Well, uh, on that one, I, I fudge it a little. I'm talking about, sorry, the pill, to be clear. Okay, but the pill normally works by preventing the egg from actually being released, so it prevents the zygote from ever being formed. Oh, sorry, formed. what am I talking about? What's the pill that gets rid of the zygote? I, I don't... The morning after pill. Yeah, so the morning after pill normally works by preventing the egg from being released, so that the sperm and egg never actually combine. No, no, there's, there's... Well, maybe. I don't know. That, that's I, the I one that, that's can't the one that's... Um, so, like, this was a big issue in, like, America and, and so I would on. disagree with it. I would disagree with it on account of the fact that I don't believe that we should interfere in the creation of life. I mean, I, 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 I'd agree with... Um, sorry? Yeah, yeah. So, so, I'd agree that uh, if, if there was, like, a contraceptive pill that kind of got rid of, uh, uh, you know, got rid of it kind of five days after when the egg and sperm had definitely combined, I'd be against that kind of contraception as well. And I, I think that's what you're imagining, a kind of contraception that does that. I was imagining, yeah. I, I don't care whether even, even in countries where it's legal to have an abortion. But I, I mean, I, I think it's alive. I, 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 I don't care if it's got a heartbeat. Yeah, I think abortion, it's abortion yeah. even before a heartbeat is still wrong. Yeah, I, I think it's murder. It's, it's alive yeah, I know. Before sorry, I agree with you. Yeah. However, there's been a long debate about when will it be an abortion? When will it be an abortion of life? From the moment of conception. Yeah. From the moment of conception. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but some people have provided yeah. the argument that unless there's a viable heart. That's a Muslim argument. Yes, I'm Muslim. Right. So, do you agree with aborting children before? No, 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 I don't. I personally, I do not want to. So, so those Muslim school, Muslim school that argues that abortion before the heartbeat is okay, do you think the that they have a valid opinion? I'll tell you. As long as there is no life, we believe that life does not move actually into the fetus because it's just a bunch of cells and they're multiplying until it becomes viable. It becomes viable after 40 days. That's, what the soul, yeah. that's that's rubbish. What what's the definition of viable? Viable has to have a heart. Why does that make it viable? Yeah, it's alive around. That's a beating heart. No, no, no. Your your argument is circular. You're saying because it's a heart. It depends, it depends on what the your argument is circular. Medical, medical what makes it viable? From an Islamic argument, wanted from a humanitarian argument. 
I, I mean, I categorically think that it is abortion. You know, all abortion is wrong, and it's abortion the moment it's conceived. Uh, and I believe, and I believe that that Muslim school, and I know there's one, that argues that abortion before the heartbeat is justified, is justifying mass murder. Uh, by the way, thank you very much for the talk. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've, I'll think about think what, yeah, what we It was lovely to speak with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've you take care. You for, for a while, but so thank you. Have yeah. a nice day. Yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go, dude. I've been here all day. I'm freaking. I see. I'm I see. Okay, I'm hungry. It was nice to talk to you, even for five minutes. Next time, maybe. Next time. Next time, maybe. I would leave you. I, the, I, I would leave you with this question. Do you want to yeah. grab your stuff? Yeah. I, I would leave you with this question. Some schools of Sharia say that, that that abortion is wrong from conception, and some schools of Sharia say that abortion is okay up to the point where a heartbeat is found. Up to forty days. Yeah. Not what a heartbeat. Right. Okay. Medically. Up to forty days. Up to forty days. How? If you're if you're using if the Quran, if, if Sharia is a system of law the, the given by God, how can you have two contradictory conclusions? Okay, where are they? What are they? I've just given them to you. You said that the there are some schools. Sharia schools that say abortion before forty days is wrong. Yeah. And there are some schools that say abortion at, before 40 days is okay. okay. These are two contradictory positions. They can't both be right. These are, uh, that's their understanding. But I thought this was from God, not men. Yep, uh, God, if it was a science book, which lists one by one, uh, we wouldn't finish. The Quran wouldn't be 600 or uh, four pages. It would be uh, a million pages. I think that leaves you with something to think about. What about Christianity? I'm sure some Christians agree that it's okay. So Those Christians wouldn't be basing their argument on anything Christian. Nice to meet you. I'll see you next week. We'll take it up.